So I first met Beto O'Rourke at first base uh, in a Sandlot baseball game. Um, I'm a founding member of the Texas Playboys Baseball Club, named after Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys. That's an independent team here in Austin. And we'll have teams in other cities, uh, friends form teams and come play us. And so some folks formed a team in El Paso called Los Diablitos de El Paso. And they came to play us in April of 2017. And they had a lanky center fielder uh, with the funny name that happened to be running for U.S. Senate. Um, and I had been feeling during and after the 2016 election how much we dehumanize each other through politics, how disconnected that leaves us, and how um, it sort of turns people off from being involved in the political process. I was looking for the opportunity to tell a story that might rehumanize politics and communicate the human experience of it. When Beto jumped up on a hay bale and started talking to the crowd that was at the baseball game, um, it was clear right away, like, oh man, this guy has something special. Um, but not just him, but the type of sort of risky, unconventional campaign that he was gonna run was really exciting to us. Um, he, you know, was, was going to go to every county in Texas to show up in person, even in the deepest, reddest, most conservative areas, to run with no PAC money, um, to have no consultants or pollsters and a bunch of kind of political newcomers around him, um, and to, you know, that he wasn't gonna apologize for his policy positions or moderate them for, for political optics. So that was like, this sounds like an exciting odyssey, you know, across the state. Um, and, you know, it also felt like he was going to run this radically transparent campaign. And when he ultimately agreed to let us do this without him having any creative control, any access to the footage, it felt like, wow, this guy's really walking the walk when it comes to transparency. And man, like, we'll have the opportunity to make something that feels really behind the scenes and revelatory. Um, and, uh, and, and so we were, we were off and running. So we started shooting in November of 2017, and we shot for the final 12 months of the, the campaign. Campaign. He, I think, was into it, but of course had a team that was like, can you remind us again why this isn't a total distraction that won't help us win the election? It was like some reasonable questions, um, but uh, we... Um, I was able to go and spend a few days with them on the campaign trail, just me, no crew, no camera, um, and just kind of get to know one another a little bit. And I think that went a long ways toward building the trust up. Um, and, um, you know, it was, um, I think ultimately they began to feel comfortable enough that they would that grant us the access to do it in this independent way. Right away. I mean, I think a big, I think part of why he wanted to run was to test that theory of the case um, and to show what, you know, it, when he started and said that he wasn't going to take any PAC money, um, you know, people were like, well, that's, that's a cute stunt to get going here. But if you really want to compete, like you're going to have to take this PAC money. He wound up raising more money than any Senate candidate in history. And it has now become the default position of a lot of the 2020 candidates that they're not taking PAC money. Um, so that was a big one. Um, and I think, yeah, from the outset, it was clear he was, he was going to take some real risks and, to, and experiment. It's a, it's, a tricky, it's a tricky line to walk because I think, you know, we're citizens. We're citizens of Texas. It was, we both met Beto before we were making this film and found him compelling interesting candidate um, but it was really most notable for me on election day we had a crew in El Paso were there following him all day long from the 7 a.m. when he went to the polls to vote through the rest of his day's activities to the clock starts ticking down and the last polling place the lights go out and the results are start coming in and we start feeling the tension of that as well and knowing that we still had to finish this film and we had to get whatever it was that special access that we had worked so hard to have and get the the moments this what you see in the end of the film there was a period of time where it's like i i, I however i feel as a citizen is irrelevant right now because we need to make sure we get the shot right. 
and, and the brain just clicks into a totally different speed for that. You know, like we were saying, the, the felt important to show that he's just a person that is as flawed as the rest of us. Um, and, and to make a film that shows that you don't have to be perfect to run for office. Um, and to humanize politics by showing he's just a guy with the family and a team and he's trying to figure his way through um, this, this crazy campaign. And so it felt important to show like it gets fucking stressful sometimes uh, on the campaign trail. Um, it is not always easy. It's not all Instagram pretty. Like there's real moments of, t of tension and stress, navigating it with staff that's learning this stuff on the ropes, on the fly, navigating a family life where he was only home two or three days a month for almost two years with three young kids um, and so we wanted to include as, as much of that tough stuff um, um, as, as possible in the film and to show a, a complex person um, not just the rock star that we see you know in glossy magazine profiles. We wanted to make a film that had a strong point of view. Our access was with Beto um, we were following this family, these other characters, um, and so we weren't trying to make a quote balanced film in the sense of like it's going to be 50% Beto and 50% Cruz. Um, but we did want to make a fair film, which is why despite the strong point of view from sort of inside Team Beto and seeing the world as he sees it, there is so much in there that shows him to be a flawed, complicated character. Um, and so Cruz was a little bit like Godot in that, like he's sort of like off stage, um, and what we tried to do is just see and experience him Cruz the way that 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 team Beto was which is like oh he's tweeting about this stuff he's saying this stuff they're seeing the news they're getting the negative advertising that's happening and then we have the big moment with the debate which is so like you see him really um, connect with Cruz in, in, in person for the first time at this debate, um, which is the first time they were really like in the same uh, in the same room. So I think you want to feel Cruz and feel what, what Beto's up against, um, but we didn't want to try to spend a whole lot of time, you know, um, about him. I think people know a lot about Ted Cruz already. They knew nothing about Beto O'Rourke. One of, one of the challenges um, in terms of this time-bound story was telling how things progressed without, you know, using a lot of extra special tricks and, and not taking away from the narrative or the character time. So David and our editing team built in these transitions that are sort of, because we go in a, a chronological order, that, that sort of propel the moment a little bit further with um, news clips and voiceover of that. And you sort of see Cruz in those moments, but it's not, it, but he's propelling the story in that time. So it's not like he's a character. Yeah, I mean, I, just to go straight to the big one, um, you know, in the closing months of the campaign when things got so nuts with just like 40 cameras showing up, there were camera crews from Korea and France and Australia in these tiny Texas towns. They were dealing with so much that we were like, how, are we gonna be able to hold on to this access? Even if their intentions are good, like how do we do that? And so on election night, um, when it became clear that he was gonna lose, um, you know, we're, how are we gonna capture the end of this story and um, after he gave this big concession speech at a baseball stadium um, he invited um, our crew uh, into the kitchen and so we got to be there with him in as he processed with his kids and his wife um, the, the the race they'd run and the way that it had turned out. I like all the little tiny moments like there, there's just sort of uh, where Beto's eating or like when he's like he's always driving and he's putting a taco together and his salsa almost spills on his pants it's just sort of like these very um, natural human moments that we got to see that you don't normally pol politicians are usually so you only get to see them at certain um, from different one angle at certain entry points and we had all of the sort of 360 view of it and one of the things that as the campaign went on that was really important to us was to always keep that in mind of what are we getting that everybody else can't have what you know all this media attention is coming constantly the scrums of cameras are there everywhere he goes so how can we capture those smaller moments those interpersonal moments the looks on his children's faces um, as the scrum is happening that was the stuff that I was really most excited about